Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So today I'm gonna to do the guide on how to operate a Stella two-stroke shifting scooter. So just kind of summarize everything you need to know about this scooter. And FY, it kind of all mostly applies to the PX uh, Vespa, PX150. That was a scooter that was made from about 1985 all the way to about 2016, 2017. Uh, very similar to Scooter's pattern after that scooter is made by LML uh, out of India, no longer in business, but you do find these throughout the United States. So first of all, it's on the center stand. This is a perfect working example, so everything works. You may get a barn find that needs a lot of work, and I have plenty of videos that will help you out for that. A lot of people don't understand how the vintage Vespa center stand works. So you definitely don't want to get on it and bounce around on it. They do bend. Uh, typically the way to get off the center stand is grab both handlebars. If your feet uh, can flat foot, just give it a little thrust forward and it comes right off. And to put it back up on the center stand, you can either straddle the left or right side. Get your foot right underneath the back side of the center stand. This still has the rubber boots. And I like to pull from the front of the seat and the left handlebar and roll it back. I don't suggest riding off because the rear tire, you could actually technically ride off the stand and take off with it, but it tends to bend it. Um, both the cowls, they come off for service, so you can open a seat. There is a lock on the back of the seat right here. Um, uses ignition key on this Stella right here. Your gas is right here. As long as the, the oil injection is still in place, you can fill the gas right through this, just a quarter turn connect. Uh, the oil, I'll get to that in a second. So to open up the cowls, you can have these levers on both the left and the right side. You twist that lever about 270 degrees counterclockwise, and then you can lift the cowl right off. And some of the reasons you may need to take this off, obviously to service the engine, adjust the carburetor, adjust, uh, replace the spark plug. And if you're new to the Vespas, the vintage Vespa, that's stuff that you do need to be familiar with. And I suggest watching a lot of other videos. So to put this back on, there's this rubber peg right here engages with this hole. And sometimes you gotta miss that spark plug wire. Make sure this clip engages with this metal tong right here. And push down and you get the peg that's right about here. And then twist the, um, the, the lever right under there. So uh, back to the oil. If you look right here, this is referred to as the oil sight glass. Um, I don't have a photo of it, but when you do not see the color of the oil, typically two-stroke oil is dyed a color, usually blue or green, sometimes red. When you see this white looking pinky or thimble in there, that's when it's time to add approximately a liter or a quart of oil, and the oil's added right through here. And when that pinky is uh, visible, the white pinky as I like to call it, um, you have about a half liter of reserve oil capacity. You don't, do not want to run it out. Um, oftentimes people that have kitted these out, put cylinder kits and done performance stuff, the oil injection system may no longer be intact. In that case, you need to mix 2% uh, or more of two-stroke oil with that fuel every time you fill up. So the seat latches just like that. You take your ignition key, you can actually lock the seat, and in turn locking the seat will lock your cowls. One other feature sometimes found is you can uh, hook a helmet. There's sometimes a hook that's an optional plate that straddles here and you can hook a helmet and have it off to the side and trap uh, the thing. But you can also use these lever locks. You can uh, string your helmet through that as well. All right, so the steering is locked in this position. You put it up on the center stand and the bike is secure if it's parked in a public place. So the next position, obviously a key comes out also in the lock position as it does in the off. Um, Kind of 12 o'clock is off, and you got clockwise, 2 o'clock, and that's the on position. And on this scooter, there's some things that are powered by the battery. It may have a bad battery or a weak battery and not, not have anything function, but you pretty much you have the electric start that's going to work. And that's um, pretty important for the, to make it easy for starting. And to start it for the first time, you have your fuel lever. So when the lever points towards the left, that's the fuel off and you see a C typically on the lever. To turn it to the on position, you turn it straight up to 12 o'clock and that's the fuel is allowed to flow. And you wanna make sure you turn that off when you're not using the scooter. 
This is your choke. You want to use that on a cold day or to first start. And go ahead and pull the clutch. And if the electric start works, make sure it's in neutral. And once it runs for a little while, it should idle just fine once it warms up without the choke on. So you got the horn. You got the high beam, low beam headlight on the left side. The headlight only functions when the motor's running. It runs off the magneto or the AC power. Um, you got the turn signal on the right side. And sometimes you'll see that the turn signals don't work. You may need to remove and fiddle with the cowls to make them do a contact. This still has a beeper in there. And the center position is the turn signals off. Uh, you have a front brake lever, just like a motor, motorcycle. Um, on your right hand side, there's a little light in here that just shows you your brake switch is working, kind of says stop. One thing to keep in mind about these LML uh, Stellas with the disc brake, they do have a very touchy front brake. So get a feel for it, do not give it a handful, it will throw you on the ground. Um, with the vintage Vespa, you kind of want to bias more rear brakes than you would on a normal motorcycle, and that's accomplished with this uh, brake pedal right here. And when you come to a stop, I like typically put my left foot out. So operating the scooter, we'll get it started right back up. The fuel is still on. The choke is off since it's been started. You do not need to use the choke again once you have a warm motor. Um, let me show you how to kickstart it. So hypothetically, the battery's uh, weak. So typically, I like to kickstart them off the center stand. So it's off the center stand. Tip it to the left a little bit. Make sure it's in neutral which is you see the four gears and there's a dot. You can give it a roll back and forth. Do not pull the, the clutch. And a lot of times I'll just push it through a little bit, make sure it's in neutral and pass compression, and then give it a, a swift kick. And if it doesn't start, you may need to give it a little, little bit of gas. So I just gave it a, a small twist of gas and it starts right up. So the shift, uh, a shifty Vespa, you pull the clutch in, which is on your left-hand side right here. So pull the clutch in. Everything's adjusted correctly on this scooter. And be prepared for it to shift forward a little bit when I roll my wrist back, which puts it first. So you can see the scooter kind of pulled forward a little bit. And if it's your first time with a clutch, give it a little gas and just kind of test, you know, where that friction point of the clutch. See how it's pulling forward? So just get a good feel for it. And from there, there on, you'd, you'd rev out first, go to second, third, and fourth. You gotta be very easy on the downshifts of these scooters. They aren't anything like a sinker mesh, meshed uh, gearbox in a car or anything like that. They're a little bit clunky, especially if you're coming off a motorcycle or a nice smooth shifting car manual transmission. Um, I'm sure you can find lots of other videos on how to shift through the various gears and to kind of figure out that a lot of times you just got to figure it out on your own. Uh, so I turned the key off. There's also an emergency kill switch. If you push this button, it will stall the motor out. But you want to make sure you always turn the key to the off position, turn your fuel to the off position as well. There is a fuel gauge on this and if it still functions, uh, when the fuel gets very low, and the engine starts petering out, you could turn this fuel lever to the far right and you'll see a little R and that R is for reserve. So that's your re reserve fuel tank. Uh, the last feature I wanna show you is there is a glove box on this and there's a key that opens up and you could put stuff in here as, as you want and it closes up with this little latch and then you can lock it with the same key. Um, so pretty much that's all the functions you need to know about a Stella two-stroke automatic. So, some of the stuff also carries over to the four-stroke Stella, which came around, I think it was 2008. I think when those came out, 2009, 2008, all the way to about 2010, they had the four-stroke version. Um, but the operation, it looks very much the same. But I hope that helped you out. If it's your first time uh, hopping aboard a Vespa with a manual shift on it. See you in the next one. Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. I suggest going to the Vespa Motorsport YouTube channel. Just type Vespa Motorsport in the YouTube search. 
And you can see several of my playlists on overhauling it and fixing various problems all the way to overhauling a complete motor on a Vespa, which is very similar to this. So if you're looking to get your hands dirty, there's several videos for you. See you on the next one.